What's next? Oh yes, I think this will do us. This is the pallet wheel. And the little sector gear that uh, drives the pallet wheel and I'll just put a little touch of molybdenum paste on this end because that's where it latches. Pull that latch back so it'll drop into position and hook its spring into position. The spring has to hook over that post and stretch it out and hook it into the hole on that catch and check that that releases smoothly and it does and that's all good. Just put a smear of molybdenum paste into this lever that hooks in here making sure that the spring is sitting against the case here this is sitting down neatly it's underneath that contact and here's our moving flash contact that's in place I'll cock that mechanism And here we have the latch that fits in there. Get that down, that's seated correctly. So a small plain screw at this end. And at the other end we have a spring. That's held in place with a screw with a shoulder on it that the spring is centred on. You need to make sure that the spring does centre on that shoulder and is free to rotate when the screw is tightened up, not trapped underneath the screw. That's good, so I'll tighten that screw up. And that spring hooks round to the back of that lever, there's a little notch in it. I'm checking that that returns promptly and it seems to work well. I have the shutter release lever. It fits in here. I've got to get, make sure it's tucked underneath the bee lever and get this spring tucked into the body of the shutter here. That's that, so that's down in position, that's correct. Should be. That lever there looks slightly bent. I'm just going to pull that back out and see if I can level that up a bit. Yes it is. It would probably still have worked but it would rub on the case. We don't want that. That action looks good. So far so good. Yeah, there's a 
detent spring in the case at this point. I'm just put a wipe of molybdenum on, molybdenum on there, and on the this little ratchet area here on this setting lever, and this can drop into place to make sure I get the pin on the right side of the return spring. That's good. Otherwise the spring won't be returning it, it just won't work properly. And I've got to get this thing in place. That goes there. Here's the shutter release. This works on the shutter release. And you can see it would press on the lever like that. And this is held in place with three screws. Tighten those screws up. It's starting to look a bit more complete now. Okay, so what have we got next? Well, I think that the, the main drive cam would be the next piece to put in here. So I'm just going to wipe important surfaces with a bit of molybdenum paste and while I'm there I'll deal to two spots on the blade actuating ring where this cam picks it up and on that surface there of that latch where that cam drops into place. Now the spring Oh, well. It's difficult keeping things in camera here because I'm too useful at moving things about. The spring seated. That's right. This spring's a bit tired. That's by no means uncommon. Um, it's quite typical at this late stage. When the shutters were comparatively youthful and they came in, came in for a service, it would be normal practice to replace that spring with a new one. Of course there are no new springs, so such niceties have long since gone out the window. The upshot of that is generally that the highest speed the 500th of a second speed is slower than you'd expect it to be. Not that they were ever a 500th of a second. The tolerance for shutter speeds was plus or minus 20% with a repeatability of 10%. And uh, So a really, really good shutter would probably be something like, instead of uh, a 500th of a second, it would be something like a, a 450th of a second. And that would be about, about where you'd expect it to be, but a 400th of a second would be much more common, even on a good cleaned example, unless it had, a, had everything going in its favour. Just get the self timer or delay action seated in place. Check that that runs down smoothly. Sounds good. 
and I'll just do a quick and dirty check to see how what my speeds are like see if that sounds like an eighth that sounded pretty good good enough for me to continue assembling things and test it anyway so the cocking shaft this ring which controls most of the action I've just put a smear of molybdenum paste on inner and outer surfaces check that it's coupled correctly to this shaft and the last tooth on the pinion here should engage with the last tooth on that rack that doesn't want to sit flat I'm not sure why Take our speed cam ring, put that in place, pull that out from underneath. It should be about there, that looks good. I'm just making sure that the B lever wasn't trapped underneath it. Put the retainer in place. Now, all that cock and fire, and more importantly, other speeds about right. Set that to an eighth of a second. I'll set the self timer, release the shutter. Self timer's running down. It was a bit slow. All right. It tells me I've got to uh, adjust my shutter speed. the shutter, loosen that screw off slightly, move my retard gear train out very slightly, tighten the screw back up, put everything back where it was and then check the speeds again. Sometimes you can get the speeds right on the first attempt um, and more often you'll get them right on the second attempt but it's not unknown to be to have to spend a considerable amount of time toing and froing to get the speeds correct in my experience the eighth of a second speed is a good place to start if you can get that speed right very likely all the other speeds will fall pretty much into line. Hang on, I've just displaced something there. I have. It's the problem when you've got a shutter where the cocking shaft extends out the back of the shutter. It's easy to push on it accidentally when you're trying to fit things in place and end up dislodging it. It's worse, worse if you accident if you displace it and it just moves one tooth. You won't even notice that until later in the piece when you discover that something else won't go, like the self timer. Oh that still sounds slow. 
I'll work on that. Well, I can put the shutter back into the mount now, I think. So I'm just making sure I've got everything ready. This baffle goes in here first. And our rangefinder coupling. Making sure that dropped through smoothly, it did. Lower our shutter into place. Making sure the rangefinder coupling comes up through the hole in the shutter here. Now I've got to make sure I get the shutter speed dial engaged correctly. That's it, I just felt it drop into place. Steer those three screws up lightly, flip it over. I want to make sure that this aluminium shield in the middle is sitting correctly. It is, that's, that's good. Now, that standoff goes there. Our shutter release lever. I'll just run a little bit of lebden and paste down this. Make sure there's a spot on there, a spot on there where these things connect to each other. That's good. This screw, of course. All, uh, forms the fourth of the fixing screws for this point and that's not sitting correctly I don't know what's gone wrong there yet It's still not, doesn't feel very good. We'll find out what's going wrong there. Maybe an alignment problem. I'll just slacken these three screws off. Check that that bush is seated correctly. It certainly appears to be. You still see anything? Yeah, only just. I don't quite like the look of that. Let me get this other screw in place, the top screw for this shutter release.
Yes, that bush is the correct way around. I think that screw may not be the right one. Where did I see a screw that looked like that? Oh look, I'll check. Well, there was a hint of roughness at this point and I just burnished the insides of that fork with the side of a screwdriver blade and uh, now it's nice and smooth. So I'm not sure what that was about. Something obviously got a little bit damaged. Let's see if we can get this piece fitted. Doesn't really want to go on that way. Let's try it the other way up. Can't say it's enthusiastic about that either. Here we go. That'll do it. Set the self timer. And it runs down. That's good. So I've got to go and solder this flash connection back on here. And then this can go back on the camera body. Right, with my flash connection soldered back into place, I should be able to drop the shutter into the front of the camera body. And it functions. That's good. So I'll put the three fixing screws in from the back. The three less than pretty screws because they don't look very happy. Still they'll be getting covered with a dollop of black paint as they were before. And no one inspects the back of a camera all that closely. That's all the old dry paint being wiped off by that screw head as it drives in. That's all good. So that's our shutter and film advance working correctly and now I've just got to turn my attention to the rangefinder. I'm going to be somewhat conservative with this rangefinder. Checking its action it appears to move smoothly it's quite positive in its action. Um, the rear eyepiece lens here is certainly quite dirty so I want to remove that and clean it. Apart from that, I don't think I'm going to delve into this. I'm just going to blow the dust out and clean the outside glass on the front. No, there's a bit of dust on the inside of that front. I'll remove the front as well. But I'm not going to completely dismantle this because last time I completely dismantled a rangefinder on one of these cameras, it kept me entertained for a very long time putting everything back together again afterwards. 
So I'll clean this glass inside and out. It's just a few flecks of dust on it. I can see something on the front surface of this semi-silvered mirror. Well, the front surface is fine. That's plain glass. The rear surface is not plain glass. That's the silvering. And that could disappear if you look at it the wrong way. But this front surface is just glass. So I can clean that. And since that's where the speck of uh, gunge was, that's just lucky. So the front lens group here, that's pretty grimy. The outside surface, there's no cover glass here, this is the outside surface. So it's open to uh, all passing fingerprints. Yeah, the glass has a purplish tint to it. Um, it's, it's like a coating. Whether that means it was originally coated, or whether that's just a the natural coating that can develop on optical glass, or probably any glass, I don't know. It certainly can't hurt. So far, so good. I'm going to check to see if there's another adjustment point, otherwise this is quite possibly the vertical alignment adjustment, simply by shifting this element up or down. Uh, possibly the vertical alignment is at this point too, that's a possibility. I don't know enough about this one. And I will clean this eyepiece glass just out of your view over here in a nice white piece of paper. Now the eyepiece glass is convex on one surface and uh, slightly concave on the other, but only slightly. The convex surface goes inwards. The concave surface goes outwards. And if you mix them up, you won't have such a clear viewfinder image. Never oh, that's what I want. And this outside surface, in fact, both surfaces are quite badly marked. That uh, eyepiece glass cleaned up very well. Just making sure I get this little bracket that holds it in place correctly in position. It just hangs on to the edge of it no more. It's a funny, funny bracket. No, it's still just popped off one edge. Yeah, 
it's better. I'm just going to look out the window and see what the view looks like. It's, it's clean. Um, vertical alignment is well out. Get this back on the camera. And then I'll check everything, I think. Yeah, it runs on this cam surface at the back here, so I'm just applying a little bit of molybdenum paste to that, and it's just a tiny smear. And it's held in place with three screws. I'll just pop two screws in loosely and fit the lens to the front of the camera so I can check the action of the rangefinder. I need to make sure that it's correctly coupled. At the moment, it's not coupled. So Something's not touching where it should be. Let's put that third screw in position. Check that that cam is following. Looks like it does. No, it's not quite. Oh, no, no. Oh yes, it is coupled. I'm just watching the parallax correction mechanism there and I can see it moving. Snip those three screws up. Oh, wondering how I've managed to get that so filthy but it'd be because I've I've put it face down on the uh, on the mat. As I said the vertical alignment was well out and I was correct. These two screws here allow you to move this front viewfinder group or element up or downwards and that's how you adjust the vertical alignment of your images and now it looks really good. And as a bonus as soon as I had the vertical alignment correct, the horizontal alignment was also correct. So my rangefinder is good. Um, basically all I need to do is clean up the top cover and put it back in place now. So let's take the film advance lever back off this camera. puff to remove any dust. Make sure that the frame line indicator is set to the center position which is the 50 mil position. Make sure that the center of the shutter release is present, that I haven't lost it. Shuffle the depth of field 
switch backwards and forwards until it picks up with the teeth below it and that feels like that's coupled one screw in the top cover here oh just get this retaining ring in place now I'll put a little smear of grease around this because the thread that this ring runs on is a little bit rough and the ring is aluminium and aluminium is a soft metal and it galls up fairly easily so I don't want it to uh, get damaged or bind on there permanently so it's difficult for someone to release it at some stage in the future That's good. Now the rewind knob. I'll just clean that. Right, well I've got that rewind on and uh, back in place. So this piece, this couples our advance lever to the return spring for the film advance. This little shim goes underneath the lever and our lever goes on. I've got to get that coupled with that. Yeah, that's coupled, I can tell because I've already got spring tension. If, I, if it wasn't coupled I wouldn't have spring tension. This little piece drives the frame counter and the plain washer goes on top of it, not below it. I'll clean the frame counter dial. This is aluminium too, it's quite soft and this particular camera, um, as you probably noticed, had a bit of sand and rubbish in it to start off with so that would tend to uh, wear out ratchet wheels of, made of aluminium and here's the screw that holds it all in place Right, let's tighten that up and that's it, that's this camera done. So this was the, uh, the third of three Ambi Selects, this was just the spare parts camera. It wasn't expected to come home and it certainly wasn't expected to be repaired. But having made the journey across the Tasman and it's sitting here I thought I might just as well do this one at the same time so what's missing? well I haven't done the red dot it has to have a red dot here's our red dot and that's to help you line up the lens correctly does the lens itself have, oh yeah the lens does have a corresponding red dot Here we go. Ambi Select number th well this was the spare parts one so it doesn't even count as number three. Thanks for watching.